Champions are not those who never fail. They are those who never quit. The compulsion to fight isn't necessarily something one is born with, rather an outcome molded by its surroundings. By journeys travelled, and adversities overcome. Fowler is just systematically busting Jay Byrne up and he puts it down again and I don't think he's going to get up from this. The inherent desire to become a champion, however, finds its roots somewhere deeper. It comes from within. And it is that belief which drives the boxer forward into the next battle. Jay Byrne will write the next chapter of his career in the ring against Craig O'Brien on March the 3rd, where he aims to become Irish champion. His story, however, started here, on the streets of Lachlanstown, South Dublin. I grew up in Lachlanstown Woods. It was a rough enough area. It was messy. There used to be a lot of like joyriders going around and stuff like that. But uh, I wouldn't have been a real troublemaker. It was just kind of, you know, he kind of was always, in, I was always fighting. He was, he, was, he was fine as, as a small kid, he was fine, then kind of his teenage years he went off the rails a little bit. He would have hit before he asked a question, you know, if he was on the road fighting with anyone, he just, like, he drew out. I think it kind of really was kind of when my marriage broke up. I'd say that's kind of when he really, he kind of, he rebelled against a whole lot. He was probably just frustrated and angry. Uh, my mum and dad broke up when I was about 12. I always was a cheeky little beggar in school and on the road I would have been a little bit cheeky but then I kind of became a bit meltier and I was a little bit snappy and short. If anyone done that, like, I'd start fighting, like, you know. I hate them fighting and the same thing, you're always afraid they'll, you know, they'll get hurt. And I mean, seriously hurt. I met Louise when I was 15, it wasn't far off 16. I'd started to drink on the Saturday evenings with the lads and uh, it wasn't something she was into to be honest with you. Well I fell in love pretty much straight away, you know, um, with him, even though he had his, his times and he was a messer and he, he was troublesome. My nanny who was my idol always said Louise was very, very good for me, I shouldn't, you know, she was the one for me and she was the one that changed me. When we were 19 and 20, we got, Louise got pregnant on my daughter Tori and we moved in, I moved into Louise's mum's and then we got our own place then when Tori was born. We got engaged when we were really young, it was a, a little kind of a will you marry me at Christmas, you know, and then I just sat down we had a chat and I said look I think we should do it properly and uh, I went out and bought her a, a proper new engagement ring and a whole lot and done the whole proposal the proper proposal and we set the date and we planned then and we aimed on the wedding. Of the winner tonight from Dublin, yeah. I had done a little bit of amateur. It was never for me. I was, I was too old getting into the amateur boxing. In my eyes, I was 27. The young lads at 18, 19, scooting around the ring. I wasn't able for that. He had been doing semi pros and stuff like that, and he was he had boxed a few like a good few years ago. I know that, and then he broke his hand and he stopped. And he was he had opened. St. Mary's Boxing Club and so he was training down there so it wasn't just out of the blue, he kind of would do a bit down there and stuff. Oh, I was disgusted. I wasn't a bit happy about it, not one bit. I can't see the sense in boxing, two people boxing the head off each other. I don't like it, I think it's just it's a, not a nice sport. You know, there's loads of sports out there that you don't get hurt at. Pick something like that. I, I don't 
particularly like it myself. I watch him and I support him, but I'd rather if he didn't. But he's not the type of person that you'll, you'd say to him, no, nah, I don't want you to do that, and he'd say, okay. So, I mean, it's either one way or another. I could be blue in the face arguing with him and it's not going to change, or I can just support him in doing it, so. There were a couple of lads fighting in the semi-pro scene, and uh, they asked me, would I come over and give them a hand? And I remember watching, watching Jay that night, and he had something about him. Like he, he wasn't an amateur boxer for very long, but, but he could fight. He had, he, had a, he had a bit about him, and he, he had a bit of movement about him. Very novice, but he could fight. He had a good stoppage win over there. He stopped the guy in like 50 odd seconds. Um, he came back, and he was we were top belt. Like let's let's do it. Let's let's go pro. Let's see let's see what happens. But Jay wasn't too technical, and it's a little bit different for me because I'm a very technical boxer. But Jay has a lot of heart, a lot of character, so it's you, you train fillets in their own particular style. It's not like a machine you, where you wrap one off after another, after another. Everyone has their own individual style, so you just try to add to that style. Jay is a little bit different than an average person. Now, everybody is different, but Jay is that little bit different. He has a drive inside him. Um, wherever he puts his mind to, he'll actually drive to that. So Jay could be an astronaut if he puts his mind to it. He could drive, he could fly airplanes. That's the sort of kid he is, you know. He's a he's a very determined kid. The path I chose to take was I didn't want to be in easy fights. I know on paper I'm not a 10 and 0 boxer unless I fought journeyman. So my, my thing was, I wanted to always test myself, I wanted I, I couldn't go into a six week training camp and get out of my bed at half five in the morning to know that when I turn up I'm going to win anyway. So I, just, I always wanted to fight the better opponents, I always wanted to fight heavier lads, I wanted to fight lads with winning records. And when the phone call came for the Sky, the Sky Sports fight, I didn't even know who he was. I was just told he qualified for the Olympics, he was in the Worlds, he was in the Europeans, he was part of Team GB, and my answer was yeah, no problem, when. Fighters in the away corner are brought in to lose. Matched against much better opposition, the idea is that they provide a test for the home fighter, another stepping stone in the young prospect's career. Jay would suffer his first defeat to Felix Cash, losing the right way, and would be offered several televised fights as a result. Jay loses two fights in a row, but his fearless approach helps him gain the respect of the boxing community. However, his dedication to the sport had taken its toll on his family life. I had only opened a gym, so there was a lot more hours being done, not only in business, but I also had a full-time job. And then the sky fights came, so I had to raise the level of training, I had to do more training and more of this. And everyone knows me, I won't cut a corner. So I will do every hour I have to do to be ready for that fight. So I go in in tip top shape. And to be honest, I threw the family to one side. To me, it was me, it was, this is what I want to do. This was the dream, Sky Sports, where I watched boxing every Saturday night. I was going to be this Saturday night. And I put everything before the family. And it was only a matter of time before it all went up in smoke. I lost the family, I moved, I had to move out of the house and that. It's one of the lowest points in my life, to be honest with you. In his opinion, Jay Byrne in no position to continue before the winner still undefeated, the machine, Anthony Fowler. I remember sitting in the Echo Arena in front of all my mates afterwards and all my mates were there and I was sitting there sobbing like a baby. And I said, you know, it's over. I said, that's it, it's done, I can't do it anymore. I'm never gonna go like that again. Even through that time, although it was hard and different things and like that, I was annoyed with him as well, you know, with things and it was hard, but I still felt I supported him the best I could. And, um, but yeah, definitely it was, it was a hard time, all right. Myself and the wife went out, she was over there for the fight and we weren't officially back together at the time. So we had a good chat about us and everything that had gone on over the course of the months and we figured, we just said, we'd, you know, we were going to give it a go and start working on things. And thank God, since then, the family's back together.
people. Like the dream for me was to win a pro fight. I then, after winning a few pro fights, I said, you know what, a dream would be really to win a title, win an Irish title, to retire with something. But to have a belt on the mantelpiece when you retire after such a short career, I said, would be massive. And then I accepted the Crank White House fight. The O isn't everything. It's probably Jay Bourne who has kind of sort of changed it and shown it can be done different. He's gone away and he's he's fought three Olympians on Sky Cards now. He honestly was gambling and taking a chance of changing his career. Um, it didn't work out and he still managed to turn it into a positive. He raised his stock and he came back and then and he, and he won a title with, in, a, in a great win and then it, where he was underdog. Yeah, Jared was a, was a really good boxer, I, I, as an amateur, a really good boxer, but this isn't the amateurs. You're now going to, once you're up at title level, you're now going to fight, okay? There's going to be times when the boxing isn't enough, that you've got to stand and fight, and I'm sorry, but I'll always put my money on Jay when it comes to someone having a fight. Jay would take on the undefeated Jared Whitehouse for the BY Celtic title and would upset the odds to win his first belt. That night in Liverpool where I felt was the end of my career, was the end of my life, was actually the start of it. Just four months after winning his Celtic title, Jay will step up and wait to face another undefeated fighter, Craig O'Brien, in a bid to fulfil his dream of becoming an Irish champion. But with his coach Deco stranded in Spain due to a snowstorm, Jay will have to face his biggest challenge without his coach in his corner. Sometimes I'd be nervous kind of throughout the day, but today I seem really relaxed. Um, I will be nervous, I'd say, when I get there. Um, not knowing if Declan's going to be there or not now will, will obviously be on my mind closer to the fight, but whether he's there or whether he's not there, the job has to be done. I mean, can't go on hold because he's not there, so I know probably an hour and a half, two hours before the fight, it'll be a bit of a panic mode, a little bit will set in. It happened the last time as well, but... These little hurdles are putting your way. Some people curl up and cry over them, I won't, I'll just rock on and my job tonight is to come out of that stadium with a title and whinging about my coach not being there or crying about my brother being on holidays isn't going to help. Well I know for him definitely it'll, it'll mean everything, I mean I think that for him will be the biggest thing he's done, definitely, I, I think and me personally, I think for me, I would absolutely love to see do it. I think he deserves it one. I see it first time because I mean and he does, he leaves me, he leaves the kids for, for it like you know so it's not easy it's not just a hobby it's not something he really is dedicated to it so for me I'd be over the moon to see it for him. It, it, it'll mean the world to him, it really would mean the world to him I mean I don't think he ever thought he'd get that far you know and I keep saying to myself I hope he wins and if he wins we'll be lucky he might give it up then maybe that's, that's enough then but um, I'd mean the world to him, and it would be great. I'd love it, I'd love it for him, you know, but I'd rather not watch it. For months, the opponent is the enemy. The major obstacle standing in the way of greater success. Yet, as most who fight for a living come to recognise, the opponent is also a partner on the same journey. Jay! 
going to be a tear up. Barna, right from the start, I'll tell you that now. This is going to be a real proper domestic dust up. This is 50 50, and please God, the best man will win it. Trailing on all three scorecards going into round 10, Jay desperately needs a knockout to win. Boxing is the only sport in which you can lose a little even when you win, but you can win the hearts of people even when you lose. You could be forgiven for thinking Jay Byrne's story is one composed simply of a late starting boxer who did better than many thought he would or should. Boxing's fatal flaw, like its greatest strength, is rooted in individualism. Any fighter can convince themselves that they're the best in the world until somebody proves that they're not. Jay is not the exception to that rule, he is the rule, for while he'll never rule the boxing world, he has, and will, test the mettle of fighters who intend to. Some might bemoan his modest boxing pedigree or bewail his lack of experience, but for Jay, to box is to experience life on a higher note, to prove that anybody can bite down and fight through adversity. For Jay Byrne possesses an attribute that can never be taught in any gym. Heart. <laughs> 